they are me they are there to ensure that we create global uh, peaceful coexistence because when everybody does what is expected to do or when all processes are done the way they should be done when the right persons are put in the right places the right policies are done uh, i think uh, it does only mean that we will achieve peaceful coexistence because we will be at that standard where everybody can relate with uh, the issue and where that is done that is about ensuring quality control about uh, quality assurance uh, before jam yeah you you can see the, uh, the universities that were there before jam starting from university of ibadan uh going to university of nigeria and going down and why are we talking about before jam uh when we talk about student online assessment we in nigeria today we're talking about um public examination that are already conducting or administering the exam using the uh, online mode or using the CBT mode, uh, the computer, the adaptive mode, as uh, the case may be. Uh, today in Nigeria, the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board is the only public examination body that is conducting its exam using the computer-based test. Today in Africa, the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board has the largest client base of about 1.9 million candidates. It's unprecedented. In fact, in some European countries, you do not have that large uh, that like demography of a uh, uh, candidate. And is that I stake exam, which uh, of course uh, means simply that uh, the exam, which is uh, for entrance into tertiary institution, you have more candidates than the number of uh, spaces that everybody is looking for. So these are the three things that we I've looked at, yes, JAMB is a public exam. It's the only public exam that uh, body that is conducting uh, CBT uh, as at this moment in Nigeria is the highest uh, examination, but is the examination body with the highest client base in Africa. So it's a large scale examination. And it's of course, a high stake exam because the number of spaces available are limited compared to the number of candidates that are taking this exam. And that is why we have taken JAM as the uh, case study for our presentation this afternoon. And naturally, if we are talking about JAM, you want to also ask well, what is JAM? How did you come about JAM? And that's why I brought about this issue of. Uh, letting us know what it was before JAM. We had 13 universities uh, uh, in existence before JAM. In fact, in 1974, when the, the committee of vice chancellor thought it wise to look at the prevailing situations in the university system, particularly the entrance into the university system in Nigeria, there were only six universities then. And those are the first six that you can see there, Ibadan, UNN, uh, University of FIFA, uh, ABU, University of Lagos, and University of Benin. At, at then, the six vice chancellors came together and felt that there's something that needs to be done to streamline and coordinate their activities. Uh, and at then they then decided to set up a two-man uh, expert. So uh, you can see this slide before JAM, access to higher education in Nigeria uh, was determined by the Senate of each university. You can see it was also by the power, the power to admit students to polytechnic and colleges was uh, also was also decided uh, by the academic board of each institution. So you had this decentralized 
uh, uh, system. And what was it about the centralized uh, system? What you had, then you had uh, multiple applications. Then every candidate applied to each of these six universities that was in, in existence. You paid a uh, fee into each of these uh, six university application fee. You attended each of the ex uh, trans examination. And unfortunately as well, because there was no coordination, uh, each of the university could give you admission and uh, until they will matriculate while they are waiting for you. You may never turn up because you are taking up another uh, space somewhere else that you prefer. So you have situations where people could apply to University of Ibadan, you could apply to ABU, you could apply to Unilag at the same time, you could take their exam. And at the same time, because you have good results, you could also be admitted with these three universities. You got your admission letter, you saw your, your names in the newspaper, and you decided on your own volition as to the one that you wanted to take. But the ones that you didn't take, they never got to know that you are not going to come. So those places are left on field and Nigeria could not really get accurate data and statistics for planning. You didn't know how many uh, students you were going to be planning for. You didn't know how many doctors were going to be churning out and all that. So you have this lack of mechanism for coordination and all that. And that's why uh, in 1974, like I said, the then six university decided to set up a two-man committee. Uh, one of them was from uh, Mr. Larry K. was from uh, the UCAS, that's the University Central Admission System in the United Kingdom. And the other one was from Ontario in Canada. And naturally, why did the VC, uh, why did they think of these two experts? We were just coming uh, out of colonialism and we were in the Commonwealth of Nations and the fact that we had uh, similarities with the universities in the United Kingdom and uh, the university in Canada. And that is why they chose those two experts to uh, give them uh, a report on how to solve all the problems that we had just mentioned. The panel yes identified the problem of the centralized admission process. It made recommendations. It made uh, recommendations for the solution to the problem. And it submitted this report to the CVC. The CVC, uh, at that time, we must also note that when those six universities that I mentioned were set up, there were only two of them that were federal government owned universities, and those are the University of Ibada and the University of Lagos. The other four universities were regional or state government uh, uh, owned. The University of Nigeria and Nigeria was owned by the Eastern, uh, Eastern uh, Nigeria. Uh, the one in Ife was owned by the Western region. The one in Zaria was owned by the Northern region. And of course, the Midwestern College of Technology in Benin was what was upgraded to become the University of uh, uh, Benin. So, but following the Nigerian Civil War, I think uh, Nigeria decided that there was a need to, to integrate and uh, federal government took over all the universities. And of course, they all became federal government universities. So the vice chancellor deemed it most appropriate that though the employer was the federal government. So if they set up any committee and the committee was going to give a report and the report was going to give the such that they were going to surrender some powers, particularly powers of admission to a committee that would be of their own setup and there was a need to let the federal government know. So they shared the report with the federal government. Federal government in its wisdom, in 1975, decided to set up seven universities. Uh, they called them the Seven Sisters. And these were the University of Meiduguri, University of the BUK, University of Jaws, University of Sokoto now, Usman Odanfodio uh, University, uh, University of Calabar, University of uh, uh, Portacourt, and uh, I think that's the seventh one. There were five, there were five of them in, in the north and two uh, in the south. Uh, because uh, we, like I said, we're just coming out of uh, the Nigerian Civil War and there was a need to do some balancing. If you look at the six universities that were in existence before this seventh, only one was in the north, that's the Zaria one. The other five were in, in, in the south. And uh, the federal government looked at it and as such, 
came up in 1975 with this seven, uh, you had, they added seven to the existing six and it became 13 universities. So in 1976, when uh, the federal government looked at the report of the uh, CVC, uh, it decided to set up what it called the National Committee on University Entrance. The, and it was, uh, uh, that's the alias uh, Anglo Committee to look at the CVC report and look at all that related issues. Angulu report came up in 1977 and recommended the facing out of all these uh, matriculation examinations that were being conducted by the various university and recommended two separate co committee to be set up. And that's the Joint Matriculation Board and the Central Admissions uh, Board. The Angulu committee actually wanted government to set up these two separate body. One will be dealing with exam and the other one will be dealing with admission independently. The federal government adopted some of the recommendations, but decided to have a single one rather than two. And that's why the federal government set up the jam in 1977, and then uh, made Professor Akipube, the then vice chancellor of the University of Illinois as the first chairman, and made Mr. M.S. Angulu, the former registrar of ABU, as the first registrar of uh, jam in 1977. And the first board was actually inaugurated on the 12th of May 1977. And all the 13 universities were members of the governing board of JAM because, of course, this was basically going to be uh, admission, application, and all that about the university. And they needed to give everybody a sense of belonging. And the law also specifically said that the chairman of JAM will continue to be a serving vice chancellor. And up to a particular point in time, this was rotated from one vice chancellor to the other so that they could own uh, their baby. Uh, these are the laws of JAM. The first one was uh, enacted in 1978, Decree 2. The second one that brought in polytechnic and colleges of education under the ambience of JAM was uh, the amendment, Decree of 33 of 1989. And then later, the decree that also brought in some powers of collaboration with uh, the tertiary institution. It was the amended decree 4 of 1993. And every thing has, because under the uh, uh, democratic dispensation now is called Act number no. 3 of 1989. Uh, JAM uh, headquarters, yes, we, JAM moved from Lagos. Lagos used to be the headquarters until 1996 and JAM moved to Abuja in 1990. What are the objectives of JAM? Uh, these are the introduction of single application for entrance to tertiary institution, the introduction of single application fee, conduct of common matriculation examination, issuance of admission. You juxtapose the problem with the objective and you see what the objectives we are trying to address. Like I said in the past, you apply to as many as you could afford, as your parents could afford, as your state, that was sponsoring you to afford. You took exam as many as you could uh, take. You moved from Zaria, you moved to Lagos, you could do all of that and you, the exams were many and uh, that was it. And you could receive so many admission letter, but the objectives there of JAM was to eliminate all those uh, problems. What are the core mandates of JAM? These are the determination of general matriculation requirement. JAM will determine what are the entrance uh, requirements for uh, tertiary institution? But of course, this is in collaboration with the tertiary institution. The aim is to conduct a matriculation exam for selection purpose. The aim is to place suitably qualified candidates into the vacancies that have been declared by the university in conjunction with the regulatory bodies, the NUC, the NBT, the NCC. And the aim is to ensure the coordination and control of uh, admission uh, guidelines. These are the mandates. 1978 to 1988, the name of the matriculation exam was Joint Matriculation Exam. So for those who took exam, and I'm sure many of the professors who are here uh, today must have attempted the Joint Matriculation Examination, uh, as it was then called, because it was actually just for the university. So the first exam was in 1978, and up to 1988, uh, it was only for the universities. Uh, when the powers of JAM were expanded to include the Colleges of Education and, and uh, the Polytechnic. The name of the uh, 
matriculation examination uh, was changed because uh, JAM was now conducting two different exams. The first uh, exam, apart from the joint matriculation one that was conducted, was in 1989. And that was for the colleges of education only. At that time, the Polytechnic said uh, government should give them one year to get to Eddie. But the College of Education said they were ready to uh, come on board. And uh, so we had SEME, uh, the acronym for the College of Education Matriculation Examination. But by 1990, uh, the Polytechnic had come. And uh, so we had the Polytechnic and College of Education Matriculation Examination between 1990 and 1991. But because of the peculiarities of some, uh, uh, some technical colleges uh, at the level of uh, uh, polytechnic, uh, particularly those with a mono-based uh, uh, program, uh, the School of Fisheries, Animal and Husbandry, they also wanted a sense of belonging, and that is why it was changed from monotechnics, uh, from PCE to monotechnic, polytechnic, and colleges of education matriculation examination, and that was between 1992 up to 2010. By 2010, because government also wanted to assist uh, the polytechnic and colleges that were not having as high subscription as they should have had. And many of them were now cutting corners and bringing people into the polytechnic and colleges because candidates were actually not uh, showing preference for them and all that. Uh, so we, we were, we, government taught it as a policy to now have a single matriculation examination of because of the preponderance or preference of candidates for uh, university admission. And that's why we have the unified tertiary matriculation examination between 2010 uh, to, to date. Uh, you, you can see the mode of exam that we have adopted over the years, the traditional paper and pencil between 1978 to 2013. Uh, between 2013 and 2015, we experimented through a transition uh, moving from paper and pencil to computer, but we had an abridged uh, mode, which we call the dual base. So, the, and what is dual about this? We had the situation where we deployed the questions on the computer and the candidates uh, were answering on the OMR, the optical mark readable answer sheet. Uh, but by 2015, we went 100% uh, computer uh, based. So over the years, that's why. These are the, look at the trajectory of candidates population in selected years. In 1978, when JAM started, we had only 102,000 candidates, only one to 102,000 candidates. By 2010, we were doing 1.3 million. By 2011, we were doing 1.9. It, it, it was apparent that we could not continue uh, like that. I mean, going on, there must be a way that we will be able to solve the problem of logistics of producing papers over papers, running all over the country with lorries, distributing question papers, uh, with all the associated att attendant problem of accident or leakage of papers and all that. So JAM felt there was a need to do something. By 2012, when we had reached 1.5 million, it was clear that yes, there must be something fundamentally that should be done to transit from these uh, problem associated uh, mode to a computer base. And uh, that is what we did. We gave uh, the nation information about what we are going to be doing. And uh, we allowed candidates to make the choice between for three years, if, uh, if candidates who wanted the paper and pencil could still do it. People who wanted the dual uh, had opportunity of showing preference, and those who wanted the computer base also showed preference. But by 2015, it was total uh, computer base. Yes, if you look at the slide and you will see the figure 85, still in 85 in 2015, when I had said we had moved uh, totally to a computer that is the foreign based uh, center because we needed to also get the foreign centers uh, abreast of what we are doing in Nigeria, particularly the African countries, to get them ready. But because they were not fully ready, we allowed those in Africa to still 
uh, have the exam in paper and pencil. I will have 85, just 85 of them. By 2020 this year, uh, just before the uh, lockdown, we conducted our exam, and you can see 1.9 million. If you go online to check the population of the world in terms of various countries, you will see that you have 81 countries that have population below 1.9. So if JAM, was, if JAM is conducting exam uh, for 1.9 million candidates, and we are interacting with 1.9 million candidates, each of them for two hours, and we do all this in seven, eight days, and you compare that and say, let us do a census of these countries that I've mentioned, uh, these 81 countries that I've mentioned. Uh, we want to count them and do their census. Uh, I mean, when you are doing census for those who have uh, seen the questionnaire, you administer this questionnaire in less than 10 minutes. So if you have a country of about 1.8 million and you want to count them and you are going to be using uh, just about 10 minutes for each candidate and compared to what JAM is doing, doing 1.9 million candidates and dealing with each candidate for two hours, you can see that we will be done with uh, doing census for many of these countries in less than two, three, four days. Yes, quality assurance that we are talking about this evening, what is it about? It remains the bedrock of planning, service delivery, implementation of the board's mandate, because uh, like I said, global best practice is what everybody is doing. It's not about Nigeria exam. It's not about uh, uh, Abuja exam. It's not about the rich exam. It's not about the poor exam. This is about the standard that it should be. If they ask what is education in Nigeria, the answer that we should give should be the same thing that you come up either in Europe, in America, or anywhere. So the quality assurance that we talk about exam, it's about what it should be anywhere in the world. And JAM are taking it that yes, whatever is worth doing, it's worth doing well. We must ensure that we are at that level where anybody from anywhere can take our exam and be sure that yes, this is what obtains all over uh, the world. And we have adopted these best practices in everything that we do. And that's why I talk about the holistic adoption of quality assurance in the entire operations of the board. We have the pre-exam activities, you have the exam activities to serve, you have the post-exam exam activities, and you have the emergency and exigency activity. We do not wait until the emergency comes. We plan for it, it's like an insurance. You do not plan for accident, but just uh, know that if it does come, you will not uh, be found uh, uh, wanting. And so all our quality assurance uh, measures are such that it takes into consideration unforeseen uh, uh, circumstances. When you are on the plane and the air hostess or the captain try to give you their brief before you take off, you hear something in the neighborhood of in the unlikely event of emergency. So we also do that, that in the unlikely, we do not expect it to happen, but if it does happen, we are also ready with our quality assurance. Yes, we talk about the uh, computer-based test mode. We, the moment we adopted it, we knew that we must go the whole log, we must ensure best practices. And what is this computer-based uh, test? It's about deployment of items and retrieval of responses all on electronic. And that is what we have done between 2013 to date and we have continued to improve. We have continued to ensure that uh, all the things that we should have uh, uh, on a computer-based exam, uh, what we, we have. Uh, test development and circle metrics of these are there, the item generation, the resource pursuit, because for anybody to want to adopt a computer-based exam, uh, you must have a very large and very robust dynamic uh, item bank. You must have as many questions as you can get into it. Not necessarily because of emergency, but because that is what obtains everywhere in, in the world. And you, for those who have uh, seen JAM exam or who have participated, either have been engaged uh, as supervisor or you have had kids taking this exam, you, you will note that it's not 
uh, exactly the same items that you have for everybody, even where they are doing the same uh, uh, test. So we have ensured that in, time, in terms of item generation, we look for the best resource persons, the people who can write items in tandem with our syllables and it must be uh, according to the specs that we have given them. The security of these items, are, they come in soft and hard copies. And when I say soft, those things that we do that you cannot see, but they, they are IT back, they are IT secure. And those ones that you can see that when you are going in and out, you have security to check you physically and, and all that. So we do the soft and the hard. And you, of course, you have subject processors, we have conferences where we bring in uh, subject processors, the item writers and everybody uh, so that uh, you, you meet all the standards that they should uh, meet when it comes to item generation and in order to secure and in order to ensure that the sanctity of these items are kept until whenever you are going to use them. And of course, naturally, as we do, we do not give this copyright of uh, items to anybody because these are reusable items. They may come back in another 10 years. And when you also participate in item generation this year, you may never see those items possibly until you even leave service and all that because you have a very large and robust item bank. Uh, moderation exercise, when these items are uh, set, we give it to another level of expert to see that they are in tandem with specs, all the, uh, all the uh, items uh, correct, you have keys, I mean, you have the answers to them, you have the distractors, and you have the stem uh, all, whether in terms of grammar or in terms of aesthetics, all these are ensured and are complied with, particularly at the level of moderation. We try to also ensure that we do our trial testing, and you know, in trial testing, you have about three different modes. You can make it stand alone, you can make it, you can embed it in, uh, uh, you can embed it in uh, real items, and you can also use uh, the third mode where you, you can uh, administer it in such a way that nobody even knows that uh, this is part of what you are doing to ensure that uh, you test those items to be sure that yes, they are good uh, items. And these things are encrypted. We have encryption of our data uh, naturally. Uh, I, I want us to be mindful that whatever information I'm giving, particularly in the area of test development, psychometrics, or IT, these are things that I will only be able to scratch the surfaces because of the issue of uh, security. So you'll bear with me when I don't go too details into some of those uh, IT, uh, issues. Uh, look at our IT. The IT supports everything that we do, whether it's in terms of the electronic and communication forms of release of results, whether it's in terms of the easily, the online registration, biometrics capture, it goes on all up to face recognition, geofencing. There's, there's, I mean, they have told us that whatever you can think, IT can achieve uh, for you. Uh, the COVID issue that has come today, IT has come to our rescue to ensure that our new normal is has a semblance of uh, the whole uh, normal and we are not missing uh, too much and we are getting there. We said this is a holistic thing because for any exam that we are going to be conducting, for the validity of it, the reliability of it, the scorability of it, and all that, all the uh, quality of tests that you want to achieve, you can only achieve this if you take all the things right from the beginning to the end. The outcome of an exam, examination malpractice that you may be afraid of or may scared of may not necessarily happen in the examination hall. It's possible that it will have happened right from the beginning when you are doing registration. And that is why your advertisement your payment and all that must be such that to be transparent and with the, your advertisement will capture exactly what you require from uh, everybody that will be participating in it as candidate to the extent that all those uh, problems that may be given to you or that may make your exam 
not to be reliable or not to be valid because the outcome will not necessarily be the uh, will not may not necessarily be a true reflection of the performance of the candidate. You must take all these into consideration right from the beginning. So, from advertisement either to payment, we have taken into consideration up to online access for candidates, and that is why in our case you must have your unique registration. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, telephone number for you to be able to register so that we can tie you to uh, your application right from the beginning up to when we'll be meeting you in the examination hall. And you can see there the registration platform that requires your telephone, it obtains your e-pin, the opportunity to correct your mistakes and all that. And at this moment that we talk, we talk we, you can see that if you have observed or you've been opportune or you have had a case of any of your kids uh, uh, take uh, our exam and it will tell you about how dynamic the registration, uh, but we continue to simplify this. And when we get to that point where we are so too sure that yes, certain things have been put in the system that cannot be beaten then uh, you can even do registration in your various uh, homes. IBAS, integrated brochure and syllabus, like I said, all these have been taken into consideration because anybody that is going to do, that is going to sit for exam needs to know the syllabus, needs to know what, con what the content, the reading text, the brochure itself, uh, what it requires so that you do not get into the exam nation hall and begin to say you want to change the subject from one play, uh, from one subject to another, we have an integrated brochure system that is online. We have the CD given to you during registration, and we have ensured that this, these are simplified. They are made available, and they are such that you can relate to like ABC that uh, you are taught uh, from nursery, so that uh, at every point in time you ensure this quality because the end, at the end of the day, will only be able to justify the means if you have taken into consideration the beginning of it. Yes, this exam terms, uh, we have our exam term, we have continued to improve on it. Uh, in the past, when we didn't take it uh, as anything, we could allow one exam term to stand, but we have seen that some have brought back through the back door, what used to be what they call special center where anything it goes. So these days, you don't know have one town exam, you don't have one center exam town anymore. It must be minimum of uh, three, four, so that uh, nobody plans registration and, and then storm a particular town. Uh, in fact, before the indigenous of those towns uh, realize or look for registration fees, people have come from all over the place to bombard uh, through some uh, uh, cyber. Uh, cafe or some tutorial classes and all that. Then the exam center, our exam exam center, since we moved from paper and pencil to computer based, I mean, uh, CBT centers in uh, JAM, we call them the professional test centers and our offices because they also register, we call them registration uh, centers. Uh, we have centers abroad. We have in the Benin Republic, the Cameroon, Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, Ethiopia, South Africa, Saudi Arabia, United Kingdom, the Gambia, United States. Between 1977, 79, and 81, we stopped because there was low subscription. But lately, there have been agitation from the United States, particularly in the areas dominated by Blacks, especially Nigerians, who want to return to Nigeria University because they believe the system is now uh, working again, and we should be returning to United States as soon as uh, we can. These are the requirements for our centers, uh, for anybody who want to set up a center, or you just want to have an idea of what it does look like, you can go to www.jam.gov.ng, and you can see our center requirement. Uh, we can give you the synopsis here. It must be minimum of 250 computers, it must not be more than two rooms. The provisions of individual cubicles, minimum of 15 inches, or the computer must be LAN, because these are all quality assurance that we use in administering our online system. And they do so uh, great in ensuring 
that uh, candidates uh, uh, and the exam owners do not uh, connive to uh, cheat the system. Uh, we ensure that uh, the requirement continues, availability of backup. When we are going to start CBT, everybody was shouting, where is the NEPA going to be coming from? And we said, let everybody sweep his corner. Jam has not been set up to uh, do power issue. Jam has not been set up to teach uh, computer literacy. Jam has been set up to conduct exam. And if we put our requirements out there, anybody that meets it, we give you the uh, approval. So we are not saying you must rely on public supply of power. You must have generating system. You must have uh, 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 inverter. You have have UPS, and these are things that we go through. And uh, people like Professor uh, Mudashiro Yusuf will tell you because our technical advisors are all in the lead of ensuring that they participate not only uh, as, as passive participants, but as very active participants to ensure that all these things are available in all the centers before they are approved. They must not be sharing, they must not share premises with cinema my house, a shopping mall, so that you do not disturb during the exam. The requirement, you have CCTV, these are footages that we also watch during and after the exam, you must have all the CCTV uh, in the exam. These are quality assurance. Yes, the center validation, physical inspection, like I've just mentioned, technical advisors all over the country, we appointed them to be part of this and they have been doing wonderfully well and they have helped the system, helped the nation to achieve what we are achieving and that people are giving accolades to the effort that we are putting in place. The center accreditation is all part of what I've just mentioned, this, but we have one state to the other and you must move from one state to another. These are all quality assurance that you must ensure that you have in, uh, assessment in the administration. And of course, finally, we have the center approval uh, for those who are able to make it. And uh, unfortunately, if you are not able to make it, to try again uh, next year. Uh, still part of the pre-examination activities, we have our notification that tells you clearly, tells you clearly the time of your exam, it tells you clearly the, uh, the date of your exam, the location of the exam center, the subject they are going to be uh, sitting for another. These might be seen as accessories to what we are doing, but we do not see them as accessories. We see them as key, critical, because uh, if you want to do whatever uh, that will bring a success to a process, you must take every step of the process at the same level so that none will be abused at any point. And so as little or as minute, as insignificant that anybody will see uh, registration uh, notification, please pick our notification slip and read word for word from beginning to the end. You will even see the do's and don'ts in the exams and all that because these are all critical uh, issues. Then the prohibited items they notice is given well ahead. In the exam hall, you do not bring watches, you do not bring biro, mobile phones, yeah, all there. And anybody that, yeah, and as the students uh, get uh, to the level uh, that they get to in trying to abuse the system, we also try as much as possible to go well ahead uh, of them. We do not have all the time in the world to give you samples of what, uh, uh, some of these things can do because ordinarily when somebody says, oh, uh, wh why are you telling me that I cannot use a particular type of wristwatch? Uh, because uh, all the smart wristwatches, of course, that you know of uh, today can give you questions and answers. Somebody can be sending all these things uh, to you. Uh, earring, uh, jewelries and all these, these are banned from my uh, from, uh, exam hall. We have biometric verification. Naturally, we do this right from the point of registration and when we then verify. We also do cross verification. Cross verification that uh, when we have done uh, registration, we are concluded, we now uh, match uh, these uh, biometrics that we have done and we now try to cross check them 
And it's been very revealing. It's been very, very revealing. And you can see how smart uh, many people uh, have been. Even this 2020, uh, people have been uh, shouting, yes, my biometrics was not uh, captured on the day of the exam. When is Jam going to give me another exam? If we tell you what we have found out about those ones, uh, many people will say, yes, we have beaten them uh, to, to eat again because they just create impression uh, that the uh, perception in the minds of people that they are innocent. But when you see the real truth about uh, some of these things, and thank God this is ICT, this is science. This is not about somebody who knows anybody and all that. It's quite revealing. And uh, if anybody is somewhere thinking that, oh, they are going to give me another exam because I could not do biometric, we, on, those who could not do biometrics on the day exam, we told our BVR staff to take their pictures and take another biometrics. And we have gone back now to look at those biometrics and those pictures with the original things they gave. And you need to see uh, the result. Uh, this is part of the quality assurance that we do. We do mock exam to, for three things. Yes, we confirm the readiness of the exam center. We try to verify the preparedness of the candidate and of course to test the pedagogy. Don't forget that I also mentioned the issue of trial testing. Uh, the other, there are so many ways by which you can do trial testing of uh, some of these uh, items. So we do the pedagogy of the items as well in the mock. The mock result is not a composite. The result is not a composite of the main exam. The, the basic things that we use them for is what you have seen here. These are the three fundamental things. We are in the exam hall now, and uh, all for, for best practices, in the most advanced uh, country, you have keyboards for, for exam. But for us, we have even improvised such that you do not need to know how to use computer uh, before you can see it for exam. You have the Nikes that we have designated, and the Nikes can do, uh, these are the things the Nike, Nikes can do. A for your answer that is A, B for your answer that is B, C for your answer that is C, and D for your answer that is D. And you can press P to for the previous question and it to go back there. N will go for the next one. And you can submit with your S. And if it's by mistake that you press S, submit, it asks you whether you actually want to submit. If you do not want to submit, you can press the R to reverse. And if you actually want to submit, you just press Y to say, yes, I want to submit. With all these nine keys, you do not need any other key on the uh, keyboard to do the jam exam. So if you have a phobia for mouse, for, you do not have to worry so much. We give uh, what we call instruction sheets, a rough sheet for those who may need them in the exam. Or at the initial stage, we were giving only those who may need to do calculation and all that. But because we have put some instructions there, we have also then ensured that everybody gets this uh, rough sheet. You do not then, you are not able to bring anything, excuse me, you are not able to bring any paper into the exam. So any funny paper that is found on any candidate apart from uh, the notification that uh, it reminds them of their uh, registration uh, details. Uh, but we are getting to a point that you may not even need that because when you use scanners on the system and it recognizes your uh, computer in the exam hall and that's when your questions are uh, deployed. Presently, we use the biometrics to check you in and we take it yes that that biometrics has pushed your item to the uh, client in the exam hall. But when we get to a point where Nigerian uh, system, you know, when we have computers such that all the scanners can work effectively on it, you do not need any other thing than to put your biometrics or your facial recognition that you are done and the question will be uh, deployed. We have a video that we showed at the beginning of the exam for people to still be kept abreast of the do's and don'ts. Uh, these are part of the quality assurance. And you cannot get out of the exam environment uh, going using any uh, browser. We have the JAM CBT browser. 
and that's the only one that allows you in. So you can actually not navigate out of uh, the, although the, the, the center is LAN, yeah, we do not, we do not do Wi-Fi, we do not do web-based and all that in order not to get out of, but even at that, we still have our jam CBT browsers and all that. We have our calculation, our calculators on the, on the uh, screen, but we are getting to a level uh, where our item writers have been told to see how to develop items that may not require these uh, uh, they, I mean, a calculator to to uh, get to the answers that are uh, elicited from uh, candidates. We have not got to that point, but uh, we are going to be training our item writers uh, such that uh, you can do some calculation on the rough sheet, and yet you, you get the answer without necessarily using the calculator. But for now, that uh, candidates are still allowed to use calculator, the calculators are actually on the screen. Don't forget that even when we are doing paper and pens, jam provided the calculator, provided the pencil, the laser, and all that, just to show that our quality assurance issues have always been something that we take uh, seriously. Uh, you have this uh, subject bar. We have uh, you can navigate uh, from one subject to another. If you find English very difficult at the beginning, you can skip English, go to biology. If you find biology also difficult, you can go to uh, any other one. And when you enter the subject proper, you know, if your question one is not um, too friendly, you can go to question two and all that. And we have this uh, at the bar, uh, at the bottom of the screen, which gives you indication as to the subject that you have not uh, answered. If you have uh, some red, it does mean that you need to go back to those uh, questions. When those red turn to green or to blue, as the case may be, it does mean that, yes, you're doing good and you're doing well and all of that. Uh, it has increased computer literacy. I said earlier on that JAMB's uh, responsibility is to conduct exam. JAMB is not to deal into teaching and learning. JAMB is not supposed to, JAMB is not out to provide power. JAMB has been given a responsibility, determine matriculation requirement, conduct matriculation exam, place suitably qualified candidate, coordinate the admission process. That's what we have been given. If you go to NARDC, and you go to the different levels, right from primary to secondary, you will see at what point uh, computer have been uh, introduced. I know primary school kids who I've been taught computer, but nevertheless, nevertheless, the simple way that we have moved this, I've brought this into our system, is such so that it has improved computer literacy. And release of exam, release of results, you know, you can do it, we do it by email, we do it by SMS, we send it to your profile, we send it to the website. It's simple, just to ensure that what obtains anywhere in the world is what obtains. Yeah, so this is our post exam. Uh, uh, issues we have done uh, pre exam, we have done the exam itself, we are now in post. There are, uh, there are some that overlap, like this one now, it gives you the flexibility of making changes on your program. So, this allows you maybe before the exam, it also allows you after the exam. These are all quality assurance that we do. Uh, of course, uh, in the administration of the exam, you do the periodic guidelines review to keep everybody abreast the online selection of tests for all test uh, technical officer professor Yusuf who is there with us and I'm sure maybe there are other technical advisors who are also listening who will relate with what we are seeing here when uh, they supervise the online test for technical officers whether they are staff or they are adult everybody is put at the same level and except for those who make the exam uh, they do not become technical officers Online training for biometric verification and reporting officer, we do all this also before the exam and except you also get to that level, uh, uh, such uh, officer, either ad hoc or staff is not uh, engaged. Deployment of staff to exam center electronically, this is, uh, this is blind uh, 
deployment is IT based. It doesn't recognize whether you, uh, you need to be a particular place. The, the system is such that it gives everybody the same level of opportunity so that at no point can anybody begin to influence the issue of, oh, this is where I want to be. And of course that can begin to breed the uh, issue of uh, mistrust and all that. Engagement of ad hoc examinations are through online integrity tests because ad hoc officers, uh, some of them are recommended, some of them don't go online and show interest. But we have this integrity test that we put on that to ensure that yes, the people that, uh, that we are engaging are people that, uh, uh, that we can vouch for. We have instant and daily online reporting. These are all part of, uh, for every exam center, you have 10 uh, officers. 10 exam officer, you have the supervisor, you have the center monitor, the technical officer, biometric officer, you have the CCTV monitor who is dedicated to CCTV only. You have a resident monitor, you have three proctors, and uh, you have uh, uh, the two security guys. Uh, we have our checklist that we give that we give everybody reminds you of what you are expected to do at every point, every day when you are on the field uh, trying to conduct his exam. We also have technical, we have critical stakeholders that we have engaged. Many of them, uh, of course, are very high ranking uh, people in the society, in the education uh, sector. And you see who we are talking about. You can see vice chancellors, rectors, approvals, uh, our chief external examiner. For every state in Nigeria and FCT, we have one, Chief external examiner, who is either a vice chancellor, a rector, or a provost. And at that level, we, it's not about uh, just monitoring and all that. This is real examiner who takes reports from everybody on the field, who goes out and all that. So for those of you in the university, I'm sure you will have seen some your, your vice chancellors or those in the polytechnic, some of the directors on the college of education, the provost have been going around to ensure. And we write to them that only those of them that have the time, we recognize their tight schedule, but we also say only those who are available to do this for this one week are the ones who engage. We have our technical advisor, the ICT uh, professionals, they've been very wonderful. They participate right from the beginning of the process uh, to the end. They are not uh, just there to window dress, they participate in the accreditation of centers and uh, they participate in the approval of the centers. They also, uh, they are the one, they, are, they call all over the place. Uh, Lagos is big, so we have three of them. Otherwise, uh, in each state, you have a technical advisor and these are professionals, professors of technical, professors of ICT or computer uh, professionals in their, in their right. Uh, we have the general monitors, these are prominent personalities, former registrars, former vice chancellors. We have peace monitors who are women of substance. They are only women. They monitor our CCTV and then report. We have the equal opportunity group led by Professor Kipupala. These are the ones who conduct exam for the blind candidate, for the uh, candidates in prison, for the deaf, any challenge group. They are the ones who give them equal opportunity to be who they are. And you have the civil society, the media, that's another group that also give publicity, not only giving publicity, also doing the critique that uh, they should do. And they have high uh, level opinion power. We have the virtues, uh, vanguard, these are youth. We have the high power leaders. We have the technical advisor to, on ICT. These are people who sit in the situation room there were four or five of them, and Professor Yusuf is one of them. Uh, Professor Jima is also one of them. They are there in the situation room and they give uh, backing support, not only to uh, the technical officer, but even to colleagues, technical advisors on the field, because they know what happened all the time in the situation room. So that when we change tactics, uh, all of a sudden, uh, they also communicate same to colleagues uh, effectively and uh, professionally. We have people in the secretariat who also coordinate all the activities. We have our security guys, civil defense, uh, police, SSS. These are all to ensure that uh, 
we do the right uh, post exam activities. We have the uh, review of CCTV. We look at all examination by practice cases. We follow up with prosecution and, uh, and, uh, and sanction uh, just to ensure that nobody goes free. Otherwise, we will not be able to. Then I talked about emergency and exigency earlier. Uh, we can do more pop exam when, the, when it becomes absolutely necessary. And we can have candidates with biometrics issue, genuine biometric issue. I've told you about those who do not have genuine biometrics issues and we have been having problems uh, uh, with them, but those uh, revealing and of course, they should not expect anything that is uh, out of place. Uh, people with technical issues, yes, where it is clear and it's reported and it's confirmed, we look at those. These are unlikely issues that can happen. And when they do happen, we are a responsive and responsible outfit uh, with all sense of modesty. We do all this knowing that uh, the nation deserves nothing less than the best from an organization like us and deserve nothing less than the best from the people that are, the all Almighty has given the opportunity to be at the end of a fair at a particular time. And when you have candidates in a center where you have mass cheating and you are not able to decipher who is directly involved or not. In a football match, when you go to the stadium and it becomes unruly and they throw their gas, whether you have been shouting, I've been throwing stone, it doesn't matter. Everybody will inhale the uh, tear gas to ensure that sanity is brought uh, to bear. So when, however, in an exam center like a jab exam where there's mass cheating, and we believe that the outcome of the, the, the outcome of the exam following the analysis that we have done does not show that, yes, the, uh, that's the performance of, the true performance of candidate. We look at such exam again and then recall candidates to come and, uh, uh, the COVID has brought some issues uh, that these are a bit treated on the emergency and all that. Uh, and uh, you, you, you know, Jam was quite lucky. Uh, and when I say lucky, uh, the 21st or 22nd, when we finish uh, the last paper in Bayelsa, that's when the issue of lockdown uh, started in the country. So we were able to conduct the 2020 exam. But there are always attendant issues to exam. And we have not been able to attend to such issues. So now that uh, restrictions are, are being eased and uh, it's as if uh, we are getting back to uh, our uh, responsibility. We are putting in place those things that will ensure that we follow all the protocols, all the advices of health agencies and the federal government uh, in, in, in ensuring that we prevent uh, or prevent uh, the impact of uh, COVID-19. So uh, in our centers, in our offices now, we are going to be having what Called smartphone. You can see the number. These are just samples. Uh, all these numbers will start with 0700. Then you have jam. Then if it's ABIA, you have ABIA. If it's exam, like test administration, is exam. If it's like uh, admission, it's admission. If it's Squara, if it's Undo, you just take the first three letters of the state and you get uh, on the phone and you now book appointment. Unlike in the past, that you just walk into the jam office, that will not be the new normal. The new normal is that you need an appointment to come and do one thing or the other. And that appointment you can get on the phone or you can do online booking uh, through our USSD star 55019 uh, ash. And then uh, it, uh, it comes up and you see online booking, it asks you which state you are, and you give the state, you, you ask you, uh, one or two questions and it gives you an appointment and you must go to the office at that moment. Otherwise you missed your, these are responses and proactiveness that we are bringing into it. Uh, this because uh, we prepare for such emergen emergencies as well. We have the OTP, you know, the biometrics. For those who want to make changes, ordinarily you have to put your biometrics and all that. But now with COVID and you have one scanners, we, well, we have one scanner and you don't want candidates 
coming using the same scanner and you have droplet of COVID on the scanner and another candidate comes and put his own finger and put his finger and all that using the same. So what we have devised for now is the one-time password. So when you need to carry out any activity in JAM that requires you to have biometrics, who we are stepping down biometrics at this moment, you will get a one-time password. But even at that, we will still do some verification on the screen. We must be sure that the photograph on the screen tallies uh, with you. All our offices now have hand washing uh, system. Some of them have been invented by some of our uh, some of our institution, Kwara State Polytechnic invented some. We bought about 50 from them. Our chief polytechnic has also done some. We have bought uh, about another 50 from them. And we have distributed this all to our offices, to our centers, to ensure that uh, these are done. The body check, and sorry, the, the temperature check, the body disinfectant, the office, the, the contamination have been done. All our partners will ensure that we relate with them in the best way and manner that we can. The, I can see the Federal and the State Ministry of Education. You have the, the regulatory and examination bodies, the NUC and others, like NECO. You have the university polytechnic and you have our service providers and uh, stakeholders all doing. What are the challenges that we are faced in this? We, it's not been all uh, good, 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 all rosy, no. We still have cases of examination malpractice. We have impersonation and substitution. You have candidate one candidate registering, another one turning up on exam day. They are the paid examination takers, but we are lucky that we have a system that juxtaposes uh, the two profiles, the profile of the people who take exam, the profile of people who do the registration, and where you have multiple biometrics, we also have been able to see that, yes, people are trying to beat uh, all these uh, uh, measures that we are put in place. Then we have fraudulent exam uh, center owners who, always uh, try as much as possible to sabotage the uh, exam, making money. Some don't even, it's not about money because at times you also see some people online, web, uh, web, web fraud. They tell you the exam for tomorrow is out, you pay 5,000 naira. They even give you back accounts and all that. These are people that we still battle with. We have parents who are encouraging examination and practice because when they say 15 year old, 16 year old, uh, kids are paid 215,000 naira for answer today. You begin to wonder where those money are coming from. The money naturally must have couldn't have come from a 15 year old. Uh, so it's more somebody that must have paid for that. And you have much cheating, uh, cheating uh, syndicates, particularly in some uh, interior where they just say, look, this is our area. Uh, you have to pay matching grant. Everybody who is there must pay something and all that. And they put the light of letters, uh, exam official to threat, but we are also uh, addressing that the IG of police is the wonderful, the head of uh, civil defense, the wonderful, the DSL, they are all supporting us in what we are doing. Uh, we have prolonged investigation and prosecution. You, these things drag and uh, people go to court all the time and become very discouraging at times to fly every time to for a case and when you get to court they say it's been adjourned or the judge is not here and when you get frustrated you possibly don't go again and then the case is thrown out and of course that's what those people want anyway so these are challenges uh inadequate city center in some part of the country the reason why some exam will go beyond seven or eight days is because of limited number of cbt centers. i think government needs to look at uh what are the recommendations we want since it's CBT? We want uh, some of our staff uh, and adults staff trained in such a way that uh, they will be abreast with the latest technology anywhere in the world. We want dedicated courts, just like uh, you have uh, dedicated cases, a court now for um, corruption cases, maybe is either we look at example practice cases as also part of corruption cases and join those uh, with EFCC, ICPC with this or uh, in the wisdom of the CJN or the CJ of each state, they look at the opportunity of trying to 
assign particular judges uh, on the examination cases. And when we have such judges, we have the jam, NECO, we can all organize so that we have refresher, uh, refresher training for people who will be uh, prosecuting, who will be investigating the judges themselves, the, the lawyers and all that, so that uh, Nigeria will be best for them. We, we can begin to look at open book examination as they do in Russia and some countries, uh, and just ensure that candidates do it very, very wide. And then uh, you will not worry about whether anybody's bringing any funny materials to the exam. We should have political will and concerted effort at adopting single identity. We tried to do that with NIMSI, but unfortunately we couldn't uh, effect it. We couldn't implement it in 2020. But we are looking beyond 2020 and we are hoping that uh, NIPSI will also respond and we work together. It's not only going to be good for JAM, it's not only going to be good for examination industry, it will be good for our country. Uh, instead of everybody taking biometrics, you take biometrics in the bank, you take biometrics for international passport, JAM does its own the, uh, correctional services. We have one single identity in the country and uh, we will all be better for it. We should be able to reward hard work and sanction offenses. We should be able to name and shame exam uh, cheat. Adoption of more innovative ICT, this is our recommendation. And what's our conclusion? Our conclusion is that, yes, quality assurance permits all the operations and activities of the board. And naturally, we should expect that uh, this is about uh, achieving a aim, uh, achieving a goal, achieving an objective. And when we so do, because that's what uh, is done everywhere, then we can be playing at the global level where anybody can be sure uh, that yes, uh, we can uh, we can repose confidence in the result that is coming out of this. We have put we can put measures uh, that uh, will ca will carry out that can be that can that the board are carried out efficiently and effectively. So that the mandate uh, as uh, encapsulated in our mission and vision are uh, done in such a way that yes, we are there. The board has continued to adopt different measures and means to achieve quality assurance. These are two numerous. Uh, so, and in finally concluding, we say if we have all these done, you have the software and the hardware. I've mentioned the software, what it does mean and the hardware what it does mean. In other words, do IT and do the one that you can see. Do the latent one and do the manifest one. Anything that we do, we do both. Make it loud and make it silent. Tell the world what we are doing. And in some cases where you do not need to let anybody know, uh, then catch them by surprise. Use the man and use machine, yes, so that uh, anywhere that machine can be most effective we use that and where the human face is what we need let us have it let us have them written and unwritten the one that need, everybody needs to know let everybody need to uh, have it in the training manual in the law in the guidelines and where we need to keep quiet but as exam industry players we know what we are doing let us make them conventional but unwritten we should be rigid in some cases yeah, yes, our yes is yes, we can move us. That is what obtains. We can also be flexible to give the benefit of the doubt where it becomes absolutely necessary. We can have the sweet, we can have the bitter, we can have the reward, we can have sanction. I've said it, let us be transparent and let us also be confidential about it. Uh, we should be able to spend money where we should spend money. And uh, we, we should also not be extravagant where we do not need to be. I want to thank everybody for the opportunity that I've been given to do this uh, today. I hope that uh, any limitation that we have experienced will forgive me for this. So back to the moderator. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, presenter, uh, Dr. Yusuf. Well, it's indeed uh, a very exciting presentation from your hands, sir. And uh, we have uh, audience already uh, showing questions in uh, here and there. So, and, and also let me just uh, mention this, that we have some of our participants 
following live on YouTube. We have 40, about 14 of them. And we are taking questions from both platforms. And like I said earlier, I've announced on the YouTube platform, YouTube followers kindly use the URL to our open poll to ask your question. So we'll take your question from that end. Um, let me take those on Zoom first. I think the first question here from Fatima Yusuf says, please, what is JAM doing about cheating in JAM special centers across the nations? I think those are the answer. But sir, you can just note uh, the question, maybe after about three of them, you can just respond to them all. Then uh, another question comes like, is there still negative, uh, is there still negative marking in UTME? Okay, then we have uh, Jimo Mohamed Idris. How do you standardize your item using candidates since your examination? Hey, hey. I, I don't know what the person mean there because I can't pronounce the word ASED. Since the examination asked on candidates, not students. Okay, maybe the person is asking how the question is generally standardized. So I think we can take those things. And then... I thank you very much. Uh, I think the first uh, question is about uh, cheating or something, right? Yes, That's yes. About, uh, the, yeah, I've uh, delved extensively towards the end about uh, examination term malpractice. We, at the initial stage, our policy was when we arrest candidates. We do not, in the past, we didn't want to dissipate energy going to police station and all that. So all we do was to cancel the results and move on. But we thought that that is not giving uh, flesh to uh, the law. We then decided that, look, let's go the whole off. When you begin to make people make example of some of these corporates, then people will know the consequences of getting involved in the examination malpractice. So these days, we go the whole org, we do the investigation with the police, we do the prosecution with the court, we go the whole org, and we do not mind how much is spent and all that. And that is why in our recommendation, we are now asking that we want the judiciary to now assist us by having courts that are dedicated to examination malpractice cases. I think the second question was about uh, uh, about uh, negative marking. Negative never, marking, yes, sir. We have never been engaged in negative marking from 1978 to date. What people see as negative marking uh, would be, I mean, you, you have done 50 items and you expect that when Jam wants to give you uh, your result, it's just multiply it by two. So naturally you should have an even number. So when you have an odd number, you got 47 over 100, you got 43 over, that's what they now begin to think, oh, people down try to hazard guesses. How did I get this even number? They must have deducted something. No, no, no. For the professionals in the evaluation, Educational evaluation will tell you that when you do the standardization uh, of uh, this exam, uh, sometimes some of these things uh, 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 come up. And uh, we are not in a class of uh, technical issues about uh, standardization of exam today. We are only dealing with uh, uh, the administration of online tests. But I can assure you that we do not uh, do negative. Uh, Marking. Uh, the third one is about uh, standardization of our item. I have taken you through what we do about uh, item development, item uh, moderation, uh, trial testing, and all that. All these are different principles, processes at ensuring that, yes, the item that we have. Uh, of the best in terms of compliance with uh, the niceties and the etiquettes of any standard item anywhere in the world. Thank you. 
All right. Thank you so much for doing justice to those questions, sir. Uh, uh, we have also a similar question from our uh, YouTube platform. Okay, it's still about the negative marking, and I think I've just uh, done justice to that. So uh, we still have some couple of questions here, and then I will let's take three more. Then uh, you answer, then we'll see if we can take more because of time. Okay, in the case where a pandemic such as COVID nineteen persists for longer period. Will Jam insist on conducting examination at the center, or Jam we hope to stay safe for exam? Then another one from Grace Akombi. Um, the question goes thus: In the case of in the course of your presentation, you say Jam is not concerned with whether you are computer literate or there is electricity. One, don't you think that this makes students in remote villages look like second class citizen? citizens who will always be at the mercy of the colleges of education who will later do regular education for their admission? Do you have a way of identifying the location of students to actually confirm who, what I'm talking about? Can't the jam be sensitive and advise government to on putting the required infrastructure to in rural area also. Uh, doctor, I think you should just uh, take uh, yeah, yeah, this. Thank you very much. Let, let, me, let me quickly say that when I was at the introductory point of this presentation, I said we do an holistic adoption of quality assurance measures. And I have said, that we do not only do things that predate the exam or those things that happen during exam or those things that come post exam. I said we, are, we also deal with emergencies and exigency. And I said the COVID-19 has come like an emergency and we have responded proactively. Yes, we are lucky than the other examination bodies because at this moment, is only jam that has been able to conduct its exam before the lockdown, where WIAC, NEPCO, NAPTEB are still in the wind waiting. But moving ahead, we have been told that COVID-19 may not just be something that's going very soon. So in responding to that, because the, the health officers have told us that, oh, we have not found vaccines yet, and when they do, they will test them before, so we should be looking at next year and all that. So we are already proactively looking at that. And that is why we have introduced those uh, four uh, unique measures. You know, I mentioned the, the smart uh, number, I've mentioned the online booking, I've also mentioned the OTP, and I've mentioned the protocols that we have been enjoyed to do by NCDC and the federal government. In moving ahead as well, we are likely to also look at the number of candidates that will be in an exam hall and how close they will be to one another. All these are going to be looked at proactively, naturally. And then the second one is whether we are concerned or we are not concerned. No, no, no. Uh, uh, we, we should not uh, take some of those words uh, in the context that uh, you take them to the extreme of negativity. No, what I mean is that every agency has its core mandate. Teaching and learning is not the core mandate of JAM. Assessment and placement of candidates into suitably qualified uh, qualify candidates into vacancy, that is the primary mandate of JAM. JAM is not going to teach computer literacy. If by chance people who take JAM exam become, become computer literate, fine, it's because we have simplified it to that level. But we are not going to wait until every Nigeria becomes computer literate before you go the way the whole world is going. When we started in 2013, everybody was worried. But today, people are asking others to join. 
People are saying, why have other public examination bodies not joined? So if we had waited for NEPA to ensure that there will be 24 hours live, have we got that now? No, we have not. But we have moved from 2015 to 2020, from 2013 to 2020. So depending on the way you look at it, that are seven years or five years on and moving on, we have take the bull by the horn. And I think we should be commended with all sorts of modesty. If we had waited and say some people in the remote village, there's no remote village today in, the, in Nigeria where they do not use DSM uh, telephone. Initially, we thought the old women would not know how to use the mobile phone. But do not forget that in our recent past, even the farmers were giving fertilizer through mobile phones. And that's wonderful. It's not happening in other African countries. So we should not begin to, uh, we should not begin to think we are not there. Others are trying to copy us. We should move ahead. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, I think I have some of the attendees raising up their hands. Yeah, I have uh, Professor Eo Hassan. I'm going to unmute you now so you can talk. So, host, Professor Hassan, kindly unmute your microphone and speak on, sir. Professor Hassan, you are live. Unmute your microphone and talk to us. Okay. Then uh, we have uh, Ogunla de Olushola. I'm going to unmute you now. You can talk to us now. Ogunla de Olushola. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. My dear Dr. Yusuf Lawa. Uh, um, I'm very happy with the insight that you have been able to expose most of us to, at least with the, the level in which uh, JAM has been from the past to the present. But my question is this, sir. I discovered that infrastructure is, is jamming when we are talking about uh, examination. But I discovered that you, you don't have much, you don't spend much on infrastructure. Because by now, I discovered that you're supposed to have your own center all over the country where people will be coming for that examination without allowing any third party to, to infringe to what you are doing. I don't know whether you are getting what I'm saying, sir. Yes, okay. I, can you. I can understand you. I wanted you to finish. Well, because when I was looking at your the challenges that is facing JAMB, I discovered that there are eight in number. Ranges from examination malpractices to, to others like that. But I discovered that Oh, I think uh, I think we have lost him, but I can sorry. quickly answer. Instead of yes. you to be taking that, put okay. it on the infrastructure, right, in Nigeria. Thank you. Okay. Thank uh, you so thank much. You, uh, thank you very, th thank you very much. Uh, you see, Nigeria, we have too many policies that we have uh, embraced at different times. If you look at the economy, for example, we have used the best experts in the world to run our economy. At different times, we have had different ministers of finance, whether it's Chiwokongu, whether it's uh, Kalu Idikakalu, whether it's Okunjo Iwala and all that. We have got to a point where they say, look, we do not need to run public enterprise. Allow individual business people to run, just set the parameters and set models. In uh, 2015, 2014, 2015, the federal government directed the Nigerian Communications Commission to, to construct CBT Center for JAM in each of the state of the federation. Before then, JAM itself had set up about six CBT centers. 
After then, Yamba has also been involved in doing other things. We currently are doing, we have about 44 outfits where you can do certain things on in terms of CBT that are owned by JAM. But that is not to suggest that JAM should now go the whole org and create 700 CBT center. As just like any regulatory body, is to ensure that you create models, show them the parameters, show them what it takes to be there, and then encourage individuals to be involved. When the Bureau of Statistics was giving information on what JAMB has done to the Nigerian economy by introducing CBT and the number of people that have been involved in CBT, you will be surprised at the quantum of resources that have been brought into the economy, how many jobs have been created. And yes, we are not there to create jobs for Nigeria. Our mandate is to conduct exam. But you do not expect, with all sense of respect, that JAM will now create almost 1,000 CBT center. We will not even be able to manage it ourselves. What is the population of uh, the number of staff that uh, you have? And the whole world, particularly the advanced economy, already divested, the government is divesting itself from this. It's just that, look, ensure that when you have parameters, like we are talking about quality assurance, let people follow them. If they do not follow them, remove them. Ask Professor Yusuf and others who are on the, who are technical officers, uh, technical advisors. You see, I've been repeating Professor Yusuf because I have not been able to see the participant to know whether others are with us. Otherwise, all the technical advisors will be able to tell you the number of recommendations they have made to remove uh, 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 CBT that have committed one infraction or the other. And when people lose their resources, their investment, because of one infraction or the other, if they are coming back or any of their friends is trying to come in, they know that they must play by the rule. But for JAM or any government agency, to, it's like you are telling NUC to be the one starting all universities in Nigeria. You tell NBT you are the one to create only polytechnic, don't let everybody get involved. You can imagine uh, telling NCC you are the only one that should do colleges of education. It will be chaotic. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Just to uh, back this, there is a statement from uh, Professor Muzba Wakonji. He's one of the participants, he's online presently. And I will just read his comment. He says, as a participant in the monitoring of 2020 examination conduct, I can attest to the fact that the layer of supervision and monitoring had really reduced the incentive to cheat at the examination. If this is continued, we will in a short while get to zero level of examination malpractice. That is the comment of Professor Musbao Akonji, one thank, of our participants. I want to thank uh, Professor Akonji. Professor Akonji is a veteran vice chancellor, recycled vice chancellor, having been in Alikma going to Mina. We are looking for another place to give him now to be VC. <laughs> <laughs> and with his Awau, it is a wow experience, uh, West African Association of West African University. I think uh, Professor Akadi knows what he's talking about. Uh, professor of uh, several years, scholar uh, and, uh, at that level. He knows what he's talking about when he, he's talking about the, the monitoring of exam. Yes, these are the caliber of people that we get involved because we want stakeholders who know what it takes to have the kind of uh, the kind of students that they will be able to manage in the universities. Uh, uh, those are the kind of people that we say, look, come and do this for us, and not doing it because we have money to pay you, but because you are contributing your quota to the uh, to na nation building. And people like him, uh, people like Osambali and all that, they have not only answer the call of Professor Loyedi because they have been colleagues all, all along, they are answering the call of the nation to uh, improve on whatever they, are, they have noticed as the deficiency in the system. So I want to thank him for his comment. I want to assure him 
that with kind of leadership that we have, we cannot then go back uh, to where we are uh, we are before now. We should continue to move on. So the advice that if it continues, it's a natural thing for us to continue. Thank you, Professor Akaji. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, going further, talking about questioning and answering, um, participant, there are so many questions that are repeated. So I will just, you know, I try to put the questions that are related together and ask one. So if your question is not asked in the exact word you put them, please know that somebody have asked a similar questions and we have, we, we, we have, we have, it, it should have uh, been able to do justice to your own question. So this one is coming from Dr. Yerun Kelbunladi. She said, she said, for security and safety of the candidates, what is your future plan concerning allocation of nearby examination centers? Many of them mix their schedule searching for their centers. Uh, that is from uh, Dr. Oyerun Kelbunladi. Then I have another person asking about uh, adaptive testing. That is from uh, Jumo Keoladili. Whether she's a, she wants to know if uh, Jam uh, uh, make use of the adaptive uh, testing technique. Okay, maybe we should take those two, sir. I, I think uh, the first question is about candidates who miss their way or something to the center. No, looking at uh, maybe candidates, we have to travel from one place to another in order to write the exams. And when they get there, Wait. they still spend time searching for the center and they the, miss, the examination uh, the exams in the course. The examination notice gets out. We ensure that examination notices get out in good time. And when I say in good time, it gets out more than 10 days before the exam. So if you have a whole 10 days before the exam, it's like you have a ticket, you have a ticket, and uh, yes, you have a British Airways ticket, and you are going to be flying from Mutala Mohammed International Airport, Lagos, and you live in a lorry, and you already know it's already written. And you now say when you get to Lagos, you are looking for where Ikeja is, where the airport is, so the plane has gone. It's, it's incumbent on the candidate who has been given information well ahead of time to ensure that this is a critical thing that you must do so that when you get there or where you, you, you must get there well in time before the date of the exam. And we do not, JAM does not uh, set up CBT centers or dot them around. These is equivalent on the tertiary institutions around who are interested, the state government who may be interested, the individuals who may be interested. You'll be surprised when you see the statistics, the demography of where all these centers are in Nigeria. And you'll be surprised at how some people have taken it upon themselves to assist their people by citing this CBT that in the remotest village uh, and meeting all the standards. And uh, people just wake up and walk into the center. And you have places where nobody has cared to uh, site center. We cannot then invent. Yeah, you, you must use the one that is uh, chosen by you during registration. We have not chosen these towns for them. They have chosen those centers by themselves. Uh, the issue of adaptive test, we are not there yet. For now, we are doing what we call computer based. We deploy uh, electronically, instantly, and you take the exam and we retrieve. Or we, like I said in my presentation, as we move on, we may get to a point where you just wake up on your bed and you do the exam at any time of the year. It will not be, oh, exam, jam exam is in April or jam exam is in No, no. We are already looking at having exam all year round. Just take exam, just show indication that I want to take the jam exam and you take it and you, your result is kept. When we are ready and we want to draw a line that anybody who has taken exam between, those, between this period and this period and who have the qualifying result for registration, 
we mop up them and we just do admission. So we are not going to be having an annual festival as you do now, where, oh, exam is coming and everybody is all over the place. People who are planning to cheat are cheating. You do exam anytime you so wish. That's our plan. We are moving close to that. And when we get to that point, we will see what we are able to do. We may then be able to adopt the adaptive test. We may be able to even do open uh, book test. We may be able to do some other things that may come up even after now. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, that is uh, highly enlightening, sir. And then uh, I want to call on Professor Usula. Kindly unmute your microphone now and talk to us, sir. Professor Usula. Prof, you are on. Unmute your microphone and speak to us. Okay, while waiting for Prof, uh, I would like to call on uh, Dr. Williams. Dr. Williams, you can unmute your microphone now and talk to us. Okay, Thank you so much. Now. Yes. Welcome. Thank you so much, Dr. Yusuf Lawal. We you. want to appreciate you for this impactful exposition into the quality assurance uh, activities of JAM, especially with regards to student assessments um, on online tests. What comes to my mind is with regards to the uh, trial testing. What are you conducting trial testing on? Then two, what is the difference between the standalone and embedded trial testing? Okay, that is the question from Dr. Felicia Williams. Uh, thank, thank, you, thank you very much, uh, Doc. Uh, you know, trial testing, when you have got all your items written, and uh, possibly you've got all your items moderated. I'm sure you understand what I mean by all that. You still want to take it to another level to be sure that all these items meet the standard that they need to meet. And they are testing what they should be testing. The items are being framed correctly. The stems are being framed correctly. The keys are there, the distractors are good, and they are not giving anything out. You, you, you can only achieve that if you do some trial testing or you, you use psychometric properties to uh, verify or to do those analysis. Uh, so that's what we mean when we say you do trial testing of those items. And when you now want to do trial testing of those items, there are different forms by which you can do it. I've only given standalone and embedded. What I mean by standalone is that, oh, okay, you have done all your time item uh, generation, and you have moderated them, and you still want to validate them to be sure that, yes, yeah, you, you can look at what, what, what categories of candidates are you looking at? Uh, most candidates who take the AMB exam are SS3 students or yeah, those who have just finished SS3. So you can look at uh, your sample and invite uh, some SS3 students all over the country into different exams and administer the, and administer the, the test and then get the uh, result, look at the results, see how the results are performed, where they have not uh, done very well, you see why they have not done well. I'm not talking now in terms of the candidate, no, no, no. I'm talking in terms of the items, because uh, the focus for car testing doesn't have anything to do with candidate. It's actually, uh, uh, it has to do with the item. So it's the item that you want to see how uh, they are behaving. So you can do that uh, standalone, by doing that. You can embed them without the knowledge of the candidates so that they will feel, you, you get the rating. Because when you tell candidates, I just want to do trial testing, you, this will not count. They may not be serious. People just come in and see and do ABC and get out because they know it doesn't have, uh, it doesn't have any value that is adding to, to, to their work. It's only those who want to use it as an opportunity to uh, visualize what kind of 
test will be coming when they are going to be having their exam that will be serious about it. So when you now want the same level of concentration, the same level of seriousness, you will now embed them in, uh, in the exam. So if you are going to be having 50 item exam, you can make your exam 55. The candidates will not know which of the 50 or which of the 55 you just administer, but you as a, as a professional know what you are trying to achieve. So when you are done with the exam, you remove all the five five that you have added and uh, subject them to validity and analysis and you get what you want because the candidate don't even know that you have done anything to elicit some uh, responses uh, for them. So that's when you have embedded it in the in the exam, so you can embed it in the YEC exam. YEC can you can give it, you can put it in NECO, you can even put it in your JAM exam. So, and they are prepared for the exam, they will do it with all seriousness. They do not know which one is, is, is part of you. Have not even you are not even telling them that this is uh, this is uh, uh, a trial testing, you just see it as an exam. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, doctor. It's been a very engaging session with you. Now, uh, some of our participants are uh, from tertiary institution. We have some from secondary school, and they are looking at ways they can actually uh, uh, they can actually bring this down to their level because you no know, jam will be operating at the national level now. So now at the institutional level. Now I have two questions that will take uh, back to back. One coming from Dr. Amit Bolaji. Uh, is asking how can we mirror all these approaches? What is your advice? How do we apply them in a tertiary institution setting? Then I have another question from Mr. Afosi. And then the question says that currently, okay, I will just read. Currently, uh, the person have an online assessment for a school. Then they begin to sense that uh, parents are colluding uh, you know, to jeopardize the process by giving excuses, which makes it difficult to turn in their answers on time. And then, then the person is asking, what's your recommendation is uh, in handling issues like this? And also to back that question of, you know, this COVID-19 has brought about emergency remote teaching. And then, you know, schools are devising different ways on plan, uh, online learning engagement. So, and now the coming to assessment, it's been so, so difficult. So how can we ensure quality in this? So I want you to please uh, share, give us your own idea and your own suggestion and recommendation. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you see, public examination is um, different from school-based examination. Uh, they operate at different level, but you see assessment, whether it's school based or you know, in the public domain, a national exam or international exam, they still have the same principles. And uh, all these principles are not different. You just domesticate the one that applies to you. It's just like uh, people will tell you there's nothing you want to test in paper and pencil that you cannot test in computer. There's nothing you are asking uh, people to write essay about, for example, or there's nothing you are asking for practical that you cannot actually uh, test in, uh, in computer. You see, when Nigeria Secondary School uh, lost the opportunity of having laboratories like we used to have in those days, chemistry lab, uh, biology lab, and all that, well, practicals were done. Uh, we just came up with alternative uh, to, to practical. So in the same way and manner, what we have given as a synopsis of what we do in terms of quality assurance in the public examination like JAM, uh, you take uh, the ones that uh, you can have at the level of uh, your tertiary institution. I must recognize, for example, the University of Illinois and uh, I mean, University of Illinois started CBT before uh, JAM, but that was at the domestic level of uh, doing post-UTME. Uh, when you talk about ISTE, 
large uh, stake and a public exam. Of course, jump exam is in a different realm uh, entirely compared to having a post duty ME. So when you want to adopt measures that are being adopted in a public exam, where all the sensitivities and all that must, take into, must be taken into consideration. You then domesticate whatever you think applies to uh, your local environment and just ensure that, yes, if you see it's an assessment, follow all the etiquettes of this to the letter. And that is where you can get a true reflection of the performance of the candidate. All, all the tests you uh, take in terms of qualities you have, whether in terms of administration, you should have all that. So, but nevertheless, we have also have we also have interaction. We have interface with uh, 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 examination bodies from abroad and uh, locally, and we also have from uh, uh, different tertiary institutions who approach them to say, please, can we come and learn this and all that. So we are open to some of these uh, interaction so that we can have course fertilization of idea and it will only improve our national uh, our national educational sector uh the second one or the third one has to be with covid 19 right yes yes uh, in this uh, in this uh, pandemic area i've mentioned the issue of uh covid 19 covid 19 is uh emergency is dynamic whether we like it or not they will always uh happen in different you know, when 9 11 when 9 11 came with a ban it, it changed the phase it changed the phase of security at the airport all over the world we in, in the past you could take anything on the plane but when 9 11 came it, it became apparent that no the new normal after 9 11 is what we have now it doesn't say that tomorrow we will not have another change or now it was 9 11 that we had and you were looking out for bandits. Now you are going to be flying and you are looking for droplets that you cannot see. And that's why everybody is saying that from 21st now as you want to fly, you have to contend with, oh, there may be a terrorist that you cannot see in, in, the, in the name of COVID-19. In the same way and manner for our examination, we are also going to ensure that everything that is practically possible uh, the presidential tax force have continue, uh, has continued to repeat the issue of lives and livelihood. Both are very important. You have to be alive to earn a livelihood, and you have to have a means of livelihood to continue to be alive. So we have to uh, have the two together to be able to do so. In the examination industry, we are going to also ensure that whatever is desirable is what is achievable. And uh, whatever is achievable, we put it on the performance scale and then see how we are doing. And if we are doing well, we we'll continue. If we are not doing well, we we'll change the tactics. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I think uh, our question bank is just growing and continually growing. Uh, we have to release our uh, uh, facilitator. He's been, he's been here since and has really tried a lot today. But nevertheless, I'll just take uh, you know, Dr. Adeagbo and then Dr. Yakin. And after that, I think we we, we conclude the meeting. Uh, Dr. Adeagbo, you are on, can you on to serve now and talk to us? Dr. Adebo Ali Adeagbo. Good evening. Okay. Am I home? Please, your home. Good evening. I really appreciate the presentation of uh, Dr. Jesus Lawas. Because what of the experience. So because of your paper, sir, you made mention of the online integrity test. I want to ask. Okay. We can hear you, Dr. Ade Agbo, please. Can this speak up? And uh, also, how often do you conduct this integrity test? Is it yearly 
or how. Go down okay. that. Okay. Speak now, on, please speak on, please. You spoke about an online integrity test for your personnel. I am of the opinion that if online integrity test is also introduced on the candidates, I mean the students, right for the exam, it will be useful in, in, as in getting feedback from analytics as the tendency of the candidates to cheat and comparing the authenticity of the psychometric or the integrity test that have been conducted. These are these when they are admitted to higher institutions and their performance or involvement in my practices and how to improve on the conduct of the jam examination using online integrity tests. Sir. This is my question. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Doc. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, the issue of integrity test, uh, I didn't get the question clearly, but I think what you are asking is why integrity test or what do we elicit when it comes to integrity test? You know, there are all forms of tests all over uh, the place. And that, uh, like I said, whatever you want to achieve, whatever you want to elicit, there is one form of assessment or the other that will give you clear indication or will make you hazard guesses as to what you are actually looking for. And uh, you know, there are questions that people will ask uh, in series and uh, the next question to the one that has been answered will give the person out to show that he has not told the truth about the question that they have been yes, given yeah. previously. But unfortunately, the person will not have the opportunity of erasing the earlier question. So that's already uh, documented. When, 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 you, when you go to border post, when you go to border post, particularly where you are traveling for the first time, most of those immigration guys, either at the Heathrow Airport or at the Kennedy Airport, are, uh, they, most of them are psychologists. They, are, they, they read sociology and not, not that they are security people. They have been trained to elicit responses, even from your facial expression, not from the word that is coming out Somebody tells you that, look, oh, when you get there, the next thing that they will ask you is, uh, what have you come to do in London this time? I don't know. It may not necessarily be that the answer that you are going to be giving to the immigration man that he's looking for is the expression whether you have crammed some of those things and you are just reeling them out. And so in the same vein and manner, the integrity test come in such a way that when you have answered one, in order for you to consist, stand, consistently answer the others in the same way and manner, you must tell the truth, all true. The moment one is not true, you will be contradicting yourself in the other one. So we have all those uh, kind of uh, tests that we, 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 we give. And when you now say, give the same integrity test to candidates, that's neither here nor there. The social contract that you have with candidates is that I want to register for your exam. And yes, you want to register for my exam and I allow you to register for the exam. It, it, it becomes optional for me to say I want to attempt your integrity test or I do not want to attempt your, otherwise you have litigation on your hand. It's like the mock exam that we conduct. We say we prepare candidates so that they, uh, they can uh, get ready for this. Some of these candidates even pay, or let's say their parents even pay for the mock. But on the day of the exam, we don't even see them for mock. So because as far as they are concerned, they know that the mock is not a composite of uh, the exam. So they may even leave home to say they are coming for the exam. They tell their parents that they will not come, and you can still not penalize them for not coming because it's an optional thing. 
So, but if you make the integrity test embedded in the exam, that's another way of, but can we rightly or wrongly begin to give judgment on candidates based on integrity rather than the answers to the questions for which they have uh, registered? These are things that we have to look at. You see, the education industry is dynamic. Assessment world is dynamic. These things can come in order to salvage our system. Yes, I agree with you that yes, we must do certain things to ensure that some of these candidates uh, get ready for serious business when they get to tertiary institution. But we must look at the legalities of this. We have to look at the litigation that may be associated and be attendant to some of these things. But I like the idea that yes, we can also elicit this one. We can, and we'll look at it as a management. I uh, thank you very much. Okay, um, thank you so much, sir. Um, we are just rounding up now. And then we have a uh, Shampipi, uh, uh, he, sorry, I can't pronounce the name so well, just pardon me. Uh, kindly unmute your microphone and talk to us. Please make it very short and brief, please. Shampipi, I, please speak on. Okay, hello. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Thanks so much. Yes, sir. Just to um, appreciate my director on the wonderful and insightful lectures that he has given us this evening. Um, it was such an interesting and a very, very intensive insight in jump. I will just um, plead that the slides if he wishes to send us the slides in the uh, emails um, that we'll use to register um, for the participants so that they will have a more insight into what JAM is than what they hear. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that, uh, thank you so thank much for making that as uh, as possible. Thank you very much. That's Speak on, sir. And I think uh, that's patronizing. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, uh, the organizers of this uh, uh, session will take a decision as to what uh, they want to do with the slide when I uh, pass it on to them. Yeah, thank you. Thanks so much. Sir. Thank you so much. All right, sir. So on this note, we come into the end of this uh, month's webinar. Uh, we are very sorry, loads of questions, but you know, time is not our friend. We just have to make it sure, and we have to release our guest speaker also. He's been here since, and you know, for hours. So we are very, very uh, appreciative, sir, uh, Dr. Yusuf Lawa. We hope to see you some other time when we call you just to come and give us an insightful lecture as you have done today. Thank you so much, sir. God bless you. We want to appreciate everything every of our participants uh you know you guys you are the one making it uh, real for us so if you are here just talking and nobody to listen it doesn't really work so thank you for making this work and um, thank you for your contributions and your participations so we, we hope to put the slide on the association website you know just go to the website there is a link there called resources on the menu click on it you'll see a uh, link to our previous uh, our previous webinars, you know, the slides there you can copy. And also you can play back this session on the YouTube. So the link is there on the, uh, the link is on, on the chat. You can quickly copy it before now. Also, we will try and put it on the session website also, where you can just have a recap of everything we have done uh, in the presentation today. So it's nice having you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, Professor, Jesus, over to you, sir. First and foremost, I must uh, show appreciation to the guest speaker and our presenter. I'm so happy that we invited him and he had delivered very well. So incisive, so direct, and it shows the direction of what we should be doing at the university level, at the colleges and the polytechnics. I'm sure all of us should please go through the conclusion. He had given us what I can call the template to ensure that we have what we call 
quality online assessment of our students. When you look at his uh, presentation, he took us through the historical perspective and the activities of the board to ensure quality and which nobody can doubt. I want to please thank you. We can't thank you enough. You have given us more than we had expected. We were thinking you just, so just give us a little bit. I think uh, what, just uh, using that word, you have fed us and in fact, we are fed up or we are fed up. We really appreciate you for this uh, very wonderful presentation. For our leaders in the house, Professor Akanji and others, we appreciate you for being with us. This gives us the joy that uh, what we are doing, we are in the right direction. For the board members, those who are in JAMP, this is that people we really appreciate you for that uh, comment. Those who have participated in terms of asking questions, our colleagues in the universities, in the polytechnics, and the COEs, we appreciate you. Others outside the university system, outside the student system, we really appreciate you. Like uh, we have been told now, it takes real effort to have quality. Real effort. Look at what they have done. In spite of that, some people are still doing what? They are trying to cheat. That means we must be innovative enough to design ways that will be able to address issues. Some universities are they are already doing the online assessment now. I'm sure they have gained one or two things that they can use to improve their work. And I want to thank you again, uh, Dr. Lawal. And for the take advisors, we have online one of our, well, even our secretary and some other members, Dr. Abdullah from Niger, Ibrahim. Abdullah Ibrahim is, is online. Others also, we also appreciate you. Every member of IT and those who have been part of the program from the beginning, we hope you are going to join us next time. So we say once again, thanks so much for making our day for us. Thank you so much, everyone. So the meeting we end now. Uh, give some uh, time out for people to kindly uh, leave the meeting. And in about uh, one minute from now, the meeting is going down. Thank you so much for being here today.